Even though we already have a TCP throughput test application on the NetBlazer series, known under its marketing name of Exact TCP, we are now introducing RFC 6349 on all the NetBlazer products as a defensive move against competition and based on customer demand specifically asking for RFC 6349 testing. Since we now have two TCP throughput test applications on the NetBlazer series, I believe it's valuable for all to understand the differences between RFC 6349 and Exact TCP. But before we dive into these differences, I would like to spend a bit of time on TCP basics. TCP is a layer 4 protocol. It sits on top of the IP layer. The information here is presented more as a quick reference of key terms often used when talking about TCP. Terms like MSS, which is maximum segment size, this is the TCP data payload once you remove all the overhead. Or the MTU, maximum transmission unit. This is the layer two or ethernet layer data payload once you strip away the ethernet overhead. There are two layer four protocols, UDP and TCP. UDP is the unreliable protocol. Packets are sent and not acknowledged. TCP on the other hand is a reliable protocol. Each data segment needs to be in order and acknowledged by the receiver. With TCP, a connection needs to be established between the client and the server before starting a TCP transfer, so it's a connection-oriented protocol. So let's look at a TCP communication flow. The client initiates a connection request to the server. Once the connection is open, the TCP transfer can start. In this example, the TCP client sends one segment and waits for an acknowledgement. If the round trip time takes 20 milliseconds, that means that we have 50 frames per second. And considering, let's say a 15, 18 byte frame size, this translates into 600 kilobits per second, no matter the pipe size. So this is very inefficient. This is where the famous TCP window size that most of you have heard about comes into play. The TCP window size is the maximum number of bytes that can be transmitted by the sender without being acknowledged as having been successfully received by the receiver. Once the burst of data bytes equivalent to the window size has been sent, the sender will wait to receive acknowledgement from the receiver before resuming. To fill the pipe, the sender must send data equivalent to a round trip time worth of frames, as after this round trip time, the first acknowledgement is expected to arrive at the sender. So this amount of data is called the bandwidth delay product, or BDP. BDP is the link rate or the CIR multiplied by this round trip time. In this example, let's say we have 50 megabits per second link. So 50 megabits per second times the round trip time of 20 milliseconds equals to 1 million bits or the equivalent of 125 kilobytes. And this is your BDP or your optimal window size. The TCP sender will send 125 kilobytes worth of data before holding back. But because the window size has been optimized for the circuit, so based on the link rate and the round trip time of the circuit, once the 125 kilobytes are out, acknowledgements will start arriving from the receiver, allowing the sender to keep sending frames. If the quantity of data sent is insufficient compared to the bandwidth delay product, then the link is not being kept busy and the protocol is operating below peak efficiency for the link. Exact TCP, our initial TCP throughput test application. So the goal of Exact TCP test application is to measure the maximum TCP throughput achievable on the circuit and identify the TCP window size needed to reach it. Exact TCP is easy to use with a one page test setup. Other than setting the IP address of the client, the local unit, and the server, the remote unit, the only other setting is the window size range at which the test is to be done at. Exact TCP has really two modes of operation. The first mode I call scan mode. In scan mode, the window size range is set to the max window size of 64 megabytes. In this mode, it will push the circuit under test to the limit by finding the maximum TCP throughput achievable on that circuit. In scan mode, Exact TCP will gradually increase the window size until the test measures packet loss. At that point, it will back off and gradually re-increase the window size to find the maximum TCP throughput achievable. The window size found for that maximum TCP throughput is not the optimum window size. It's the maximum window size of that circuit that generates the maximum TCP throughput. 
In this mode, scan mode, it will stress the input buffers of the network elements in the path to their limit. This test can be useful to find incorrect input buffer settings and determine if there is a case of buffer bloat in the network. In cases of buffer bloat, the round trip latency goes to a very high value. For example, one customer we were working with was expecting 8 to 10 milliseconds of round trip delay. And with the test in scan mode, he measured 128 milliseconds of round trip delay. This pointed to oversized input buffers configured in their network equipment. Oversized input buffer settings can cause high latency in a congested network. And this is what was observed in this customer case. In the other mode, in which I call fixed mode, the window size to test that is set to a specific value. This is usually done after finding the max window size in scan mode. For example, let's say a window size of 320 kilobytes was found in scan mode. In fixed mode, the window size could be set to a smaller value of let's say 64 kilobytes. And this would be to find the effects it has on a TCP throughput measurement. In this mode, the TCP throughput is measured at that fixed window size. Also, with exact TCP, we use a single TCP connection, which makes the results more repeatable, but probably less real life network operation like. Exact TCP can also operate up to one gigi. RFC 6349, our new TCP throughput test application. 6349 is ideal for turn up tests by validating TCP performance at CIR. And this is best done after a layer two or layer three ethernet tests like ethersam or isam where the base layer is validated first. As with any type of ethernet tests, the first step is setting up the interface type and speed. This is done through the modify structure window. One important point here is now we support 10 gigi TCP throughput testing with 6349. Exact TCP can only go up to one gigi. Next is the interface settings. This is done in the interface window. Here we can select the rate to run at or use the auto negotiation to set the speed. In most cases, auto negotiation works fine. So we will leave it at that. Next is the IP address. We can manually enter the IP address or use DHCP if the unit is connected to a network that provides automatic IP addressing with a DHCP server. We can also add VLANs if necessary where we offer up to three levels of VLAN encapsulation. So Q in Q in Q. Once the interface settings complete, next and final step is TCP throughput test settings. This is also very simple for the user. First, we need to connect to the remote unit we will be testing to. We now have DTS or dual test set capabilities with 6349. This means that we can connect to a remote unit from a local unit. So no need to have a tech at the other end setting up the TCP tests like it was necessary with exact TCP. On top of that, we now can do bidirectional testing. The TCP test will test one direction, so client to server, also known as local to remote, and then automatically switch the mode of operation of the units. The client becomes a server and vice versa to test the other direction. Again, another great feature that many customers were asking for. So let's connect to that remote unit. Click on discover remote. If no remotes found, click on scan. We now see the remote. Let's connect to it. Okay, great, connected. We can set the test to run bidirectional, so testing each direction, or we can test the specific direction we want. Here we have the option for single or multiple TCP connections. By default, the multiple connection is selected. This is really to better emulate a more real life network scenario. Exact TCP does not offer multiple connection, only a single connection. The user has the option to change the TCP server port that will be used for testing or leave the default port address. Next, the user must enter the CIR, the committed information rate of the service. This is the ethernet rate that the customer is paying for and guaranteed by the service provider. Because we can now test bidirectionally, a CIR for each direction is needed. These values can be different since the guaranteed rate may be different for the upload and download directions. The CIR concept is not present in our exact TCP application since the goal of exact TCP is to find the maximum TCP throughput achievable. Next is the path MTU discovery option. We can set a specific MTU to test with or have the test application discover what the MTU is for the circuit under test. Finding the correct MTU to test with is important in order to avoid packet fragmentation. If packet fragmentation occurs, it will have an adverse effect on a TCP throughput performance. 
For example, if all network elements in the path are set to an MTU of 1500 bytes, except for one which is set to 1280 bytes, path MTU will be 1280 bytes. In exact TCP, the MTU is fixed at 1024 bytes. No path MTU discovery option available. The other option the user has is window sweep. With window sweep enabled, and this is the default setting, the TCP throughput test will be done at four different window sizes. One eighth of BDP, one quarter of BDP, one half of BDP, and BDP. If window sweep is disabled, the TCP throughput test will be done at BDP, so at the optimum window size. The window sweep option is to provide the user with information on the impact the window size setting has on the TCP throughput performance. The RFC 6349 test can be set to run from one minute all the way up to 30 days. Not sure you want to run a 30-day TCP throughput test, but it's there if the user needs it. Finally, the user can enable a pass-fail verdict and associated threshold. The threshold setting is based on a percentage of the expected TCP throughput performance. 95% is the default setting, which makes sense since 100% would yield many cases of fail tests simply because of all the variables in the network. Now we are ready to launch the test. The first thing the 6349 test will do is perform the path MTU discovery. Next, the test will automatically find the baseline round trip time. The baseline RTT is the round trip time inherent to the network path under non-congested conditions. To find the baseline RTT, the test application will open up a low throughput TCP connection and measure the RTT. So the test sends one small packet and waits for the acknowledgement. The time it takes from transmitting the packet to the time an acknowledgement packet is received at the client is the baseline RTT. In this setup, I have 20 milliseconds of latency in each direction. So the measured baseline RTT makes perfect sense at close to 40 milliseconds. With the CIR value entered and the baseline RTT found, the BDP, bandwidth delay product, equivalent to the optimum window size, is determined. The BDP is the CIR at layer four multiplied by the baseline RTT. In this setup, we have a CIR for local to remote of 25 megabits per second. So 23.5 megabits per second at layer four and a measured baseline RTT of about 40 milliseconds. The BDP or optimum window size for this circuit is roughly 114 kilobytes. The test application will now perform the TCP throughput measurement using the calculated BDP. As mentioned, the window sweep test will perform a test at four different window sizes. The user can see that when the window size of the circuit is not optimized, the TCP performance is impacted. Three metrics are displayed in the test results. TCP throughput, TCP efficiency percentage, and buffer delay percentage. The TCP throughput results are displayed as ideal versus actual, which gives the tech a better sense of the overall health of the circuit. The tech quickly knows if the circuit is operating as expected. The window size calculated is also shown with the number of connections and window size per connection. The TCP efficiency percentage represent the percentage of bytes that were not retransmitted. The buffer delay percentage represents the increase in round trip time during a TCP throughput test versus the inherent or baseline RTT. We can also see what the minimum TCP throughput measurement should be for a pass verdict based on the threshold entered. The window sweep tab provides a visual representation of the four different TCP throughput tests done using the different window sizes. The other tabs, alarms and errors, traffic, and logger tabs are the typical tabs we have in all our Ethernet test applications. The RFC 6349 test reports include clear pass-fail indications along with graphical information about the ideal and the measured TCP throughput for each window size. RFC 6349 tests will be much gentler than exact TCP as it will test to BDP and not to maximum achievable TCP throughput. The goal of this test is not to stress the circuit to the maximum like exact TCP does. Each TCP throughput test application has a specific goal. Exact TCP's goal is to find the maximum TCP throughput achievable on a circuit. It does so by adjusting the TCP window size. The window size found is the maximum window size that produces the maximum TCP throughput. This test application will stress the circuit to the limit when finding this maximum TCP throughput. And this can be a great tool for finding incorrect input buffer configuration, buffer bloat in a network Exact TCP can also be used in a fixed window size mode and measure TCP throughput at a specific window size. 6349 is a TCP throughput test application that takes into account the entered CIR and measured round trip time of the circuit. 
Based on the CIR and RTT, it will determine the optimum window size, BDP, at which to perform the TCP throughput test at. 6349 will measure TCP performance at CIR. It will provide ideal versus actual TCP throughput measurements and give an overall TCP health indication of the circuit under test. This is a great tool for service providers at turn up time of an Ethernet circuit. RFC 6349 is a great new TCP throughput test application offering many valuable features that customers will greatly appreciate.